Good evening, where's Amanda here then? Yes. Okay. Um, we've been asked to attend by social services to by our uh, referral order in relation to this lady. Yet yeah, when we've uh, been allowed into the address, um, we found it to be unsuitable to be lived in and she was arrested at uh, 1715 uh, hours and brought to work uh, with for a prompt and effective investigation into the event that's come forward. You're going to be um, arrested on suspicion of murder. Okay, so you do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention one question, something which you later to rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Do you understand? On the 21st of September 2011, police officers attended the four-bed terraced home in Bradford of Amanda Hutton. PC Jody Dunsmore, a community support officer, was investigating a neighbour's complaints about rubbish. When she looked through the letterbox of Amanda Hutton's home, she was confronted by a vile smell. She kept returning over the next few days, and when Hutton eventually opened the door, Jody was met by an alcoholic who struggled to stand up, and who had flies buzzing around her. Social services and senior officers were called to the scene, but they were not prepared for what greeted them inside. Almost every room in the house was littered with plastic bags of household rubbish, bottles, filthy nappies, newspapers, vomit and mouldy food. The team was forced to wade through waist-high piles of rubbish and human and cat faeces. The bath was filled with vomit and the fridge, which contained out-of-date ready meals, was covered in mould. Five children, aged between 5 to 13, were found to be living amongst the heaps of rotten junk, but then came the dreadful discovery of Hamza. Acting Sergeant Richard Dove was one of the officers who entered Amanda Hutton's house and found her son's remains mummified in a cot in his mother's bedroom, where he'd been placed two years before. Dove told how he found Hamza when he went into the bedroom for a second time, after feeling as though there was something wrong. He said, there was like clothes, shoes and bedding piled up in the cot. I started to take shoes and bedding off and working my way down through the layers. He then described finding the body of a small child. He said, the boy was wearing a white baby girl and his head was slightly tilted. Initially, he doubted what he was seeing. He told the court, I believe I can deal with any situation, but my right hand started shaking. I had to grab my hand to calm myself down. Sergeant Dove said the house smelled of rubbish mixed with sweat mixed with urine. An experienced consultant paediatrician who visited the house following Hutton's arrest said, This visit has revealed the most extreme example of neglect that I have encountered in my career. Experienced police officers were also less shaken by the horror of what they had seen upon entering the property. When Hamza Khan was born on June 17, 2005, his mother, Amanda Hutton, was said to be already addicted to alcohol. She would go on to put her addiction to drink well before her responsibilities to her many children. Hutton's partner, Aftab Khan, and father to her children, although aware of her alcoholism and lack of care for her the children, appeared to do little to improve the welfare of his children. It was noted in court that Hutton was a victim of violence at the hands of her partner, and they would later go on to separate in December 2008, when Hamza was just three and a half years old, leaving Hamza solely in the care of his mother. Aftab Khan was convicted of battery against Hutton and was ordered to stay away from his ex-partner by the court. He said it was at this point that he told the police to check on the children because of his ex's alcoholism, but an officer found nothing of concern. Why could you not go round to the house and knock on the door and I take Hamza out? I, I, I knocked on the door, but she wouldn't let me see the kids. She would not open the door to me. Why weren't you knocking on the door? Why weren't you banging on social services' door? This I, is the problem. Were you listened but, to? Were you... No, I wasn't. I wasn't. Nobody had listened to me. That's the biggest problem. Nobody listens to the male in this country. Nobody. There'll be loads of fathers like me all over, but nobody listens to us. Nobody will listen to the father. And look, look what's happened. I've got a dead son. I've got to live with this for the rest of my life. Do you accept any responsibility for what happened to your son? I feel son? guilty. I feel really, really guilty if I should have done more. But the thing is, I'll push to one side. How can I do anything when the, if the police, if the law of this country don't do nothing about anything like this? Well, who am I? Who am I? Nothing. And we've seen the picture of Hamza. Will, will you tell people what you remember of your son? That wasn't... I, I'd taken that picture. That was in my house. He was fit and well then. You can see him, right? He was saying, Dad, pick me up. How do you think that makes me feel? That's the only picture I've got of that kid. Did that poor kid deserve that? No, he didn't. I've lost a child here. 
You know what I mean? I can't sleep no more. I can't think no more. I've purposely come to, to work today just to keep my mind, mind off things. It's driving me crazy. It's Amanda Hutton, a mother of eight, for some irrational reason took against little Hamza from an early age. She described his birth as difficult and traumatic, yet it was stated by the doctor who delivered Hamza that his birth, albeit breach delivery, was straightforward and uncomplicated. For the first few weeks after Hamza's birth, Hutton accepted help and support from a community midwife. But when the support ended, Hamza Khan would be locked away from the outside world. Neighbours claimed they were unaware that any children resided at the property and were shocked in September 2011 when the door to the house finally opened and they discovered that after almost two and a half years of living next door to them that there were young children living at the address who they had never seen before. Amanda Hutton failed to care for all the children in her care but Hamza arguably suffered the most at the hands of his mother. While his siblings had little food to eat, Hamza was fed even less. Because he was kept away from everybody, Hutton was able to starve the boy for the whole of his short and unhappy life. Hamza was so malnourished that by the time his mummified remains were found, he was comfortably clothed in baby grow which was designed for a six to nine month old child. He was also found to be in the cot wearing a nappy. This was a four and a half year old child in age six to nine month clothes and a nappy. Hutton not only starved her child to death, but she was cruel to Hamza in many other ways. She remarks that he was a difficult child and used this as a justification to abuse him. She would call him names and shut him in a dark room and on one occasion pile some blankets upon the drawer in which she had put him. He was often fed on just a banana and some milk a day. He was forced into scavenging around for scraps. Hutton told the jury during her trial that she had held his lifeless body for hours on the night that he had died. She said she was shopping at a local supermarket when her eldest son Tariq called her and said his eyes had rolled into the back of his head. She stated that she'd rushed home and went upstairs to her bedroom and found that Hamza had passed away. She said, I picked him up and checked all his pulse points and there was nothing. I tried to give him mouth to mouth, but that wasn't working. I stood in my bedroom all night with him. I held him for hours. It was later revealed that following her son's death, Hutton had ordered a pizza instead of calling emergency services. Early in the trial, Hutton said that she had problems getting Hamza to eat and that he had fallen ill the day before he had died, but she did not think that he was seriously unwell. On the 4th of October 2013, Amanda Hutton was found guilty at Bradford Crown Court of manslaughter for the unlawful killing of her son by reason of gross negligence in failing to provide him with anything like adequate nourishment over a long period of time. In short, she starved him to death. Hutton was also found guilty of preventing a proper burial and five other offences of cruelty in relation to her other five young children. The sentence imposed was for a total of 15 years imprisonment. Amanda's older son, Tariq Khan, who was 21 when Hamza died, was found guilty for preventing a proper burial. The judge said in passing down his sentence, you must bear some responsibility for the concealment of Hamza's body, which in itself was a terrible and inhumane act, which also involved the true and obvious situation surrounding Hamza's awful death being clearly revealed, as it would have been with the police and doctors making an inspection. However, I accept that you were in something of an awkward situation. You were the adult male figure in the household and the evidence seems to suggest that you were under the influence of your mother. The evidence suggests that perhaps without the limited care you gave in the household conditions would have been a lot worse. You say, and this is the approach I take to sentencing you, that you supported your mother out of some misguided loyalty to her and because of the emotional blackmail from her to you that any reporting of Hamza's death would split up the family and may even provoke her to cause damage to the other siblings. It was stated that Tariq's life had moved on positively since his brother's body was discovered and he was now in work and stable relationship. His remaining siblings were still in contact with their older brother and wished to continue to maintain that in the future. Taking all these facts into account, the judge sentenced Tariq Khan to two years imprisonment suspended for two years. Guilty of manslaughter of her son, Hamza Khan. Hamza was found at his home address in September of 2011. He died more than two years previous to that. And I have to say, 
is a police officer with 28 years service and has, as a mum myself, found this a particularly distressing case to investigate. Following the verdicts, questions were asked over how a variety of different care agencies had failed to protect Hamza Khan from his mother, especially when it was clear that the family was known to police, health, schools and social services. The jury had heard in her trial about a range of visits to the home by different professionals and of how Hutton failed to cooperate with services, offering her help. Still, no one recognised the real danger Hamza and his five school-aged siblings were in. When Hamza was four months old, a health visitor had the door slammed in her face by Hutton. She noticed that the house was untidy when she viewed it through the letterbox. A registrar visited the home when Hutton had failed to even register Hamza's birth and they stated that Hutton's eye was puffed up and she smelled of alcohol. Although Hamza was registered at his local doctor's surgery, he was never seen by a GP at the practice and he eventually was removed from the list after a catalogue of missed appointments, thus falling further below the radar. A key question was asked, why was Hamza not missed at school? Three of his siblings were at school, although their attendance was poor, but Hamza would have been six if he had still been alive when his body was discovered in 2011, well over the statutory school age. It is clear that during his very short life, Hamza Khan experienced little to no love and care, let down the most by the one person in the world that should have loved and protected him the most, his mother. What is perhaps one of the most heartbreaking aspects of this case is that it was later discovered that when he was found, he was still clutching his favourite Iggle Piggle Teddy close to him. A little boy whose mother hid him from the world his whole life and who tried to hide him in death too. When his body was released by the coroner, he was able to be laid to rest in a tiny grave. A brass plaque bears the date in September when Hamza's mummified body was found in the filth-ridden home he shared with alcoholic Hutton.